Welcome back, welcome back. This is P2 for Unit 9, BTEC Level 3 Engineering. And what are we going to discuss in P2? Before I even get into that, this was from the assignment brief. This was also from the assignment brief, but in that section called, let me bring that up quickly, in that section called uh, to do this. So task one to do this, and it gives you essentially some more information, some mini breakdown on whatever the criteria was. It's not very detailed, but when we go to the actual specification, see if I can find that. So the specification would be on the BTEC website. And when you scroll down to where unit nine is and you go to where it says content, you can find a lot more details in there. Okay. So not only are you supposed to use the assignment brief, which is that word document, which you might've gotten from your teacher, you're supposed to also use the spec, the unit, uh, the BTEC level three engineering specification. It has all the information that you could potentially need in that one PDF. So let me go back to my word document here. So we are supposed to discuss ways in which work experience can inform own career choices and help prepare for employment in engineering. And again, from the same assignment, brief, but in a slightly different section, it says how work experience can inform your career choices and help you prepare for employment in engineering. That's that. And from the specification, it gives you some pointers which you can use to mention. You don't have to use every single thing. And if you find different things, that's perfectly fine. So it says how work experience can inform your career choices and help you prepare for employment in engineering. So the first thing we need to mention or the first thing we need to figure out, let's say, is what do you actually want to do? Firstly, think about your careers or the careers you're interested in, right? If you are not sure about these, then you can use these links. I'll drop both these links in the description as well. So if you're not entirely sure what kind of engineer you want to be or what field in engineering you want to be in, these skills tests and the personality tests, they're going to essentially assess who you are based on the answers you've given, it's going to give you an output. And that output is going to, um, for both of these results, is going to have um, job roles that would be suited to your personality in this case, and then suited to your skill set or things you like doing in this case. Both very good. I think this one is slightly better because this one is from the UK government. So try and use both of them if you're not entirely sure what you want to do, right? A good idea would be to simply pause the video. I've made some notes in some places, for example, these two highlighted places. So simply pause the video at any time, make a note of those notes or just write them down, do something with them, right? Both tests will give some information on careers. Now, if you don't want to do both those tests and you have a relatively good idea of what kind of career you want, that's perfectly fine. Now we have inform means to give facts or information. So that's what the word inform means from the question. These are the ones that I think would be good for me. So if I were 16, 17, 18, 19, these are the things that I would be looking into because these are things that have always interested me. So I want to be a computer systems engineer, a solutions architect or a cloud solutions architect, whichever one, right? That's something I like as well. Or an embedded systems engineer, something I really, really liked as well. So what you need to do is after you've decided from either the skills test above, so these skills tests on the personality test, You've, you've gotten some job roles that you think, oh, that could work for me or that won't work for me. Think of whatever job roles in engineering you think would be good for you. What you're going to do is state the job role and give a paragraph on that job role. What does that person do? What skills do they need to have? Whatever you think is relevant, I need, well, not I need, the coursework needs you to give some information about that job role. I don't think it's a good idea to just have one. I would say have bare minimum two. I think three, four is a good number as well. So I'm going for the middle ground. Let's say three, between three and four. I've gone through three. So what this does is that you have three tiny paragraphs detailing what each of these jobs, job roles are. And then from there, when you start speaking about how you're going to inform your career choices, these are your potential career choices and work experience is going to help you to decide the one that's best for you. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect now. We can always go back and make changes as and when necessary in terms of you wanting to be a computer systems engineer. You go and do the work experience and you realize, actually, this isn't for me. That's the whole point of this section, right? So let me scroll down. You provide information about the specific career you have chosen to get work experience in. I want to get work experience in a computer system as a computer systems engineer. What does that actually mean? What are the skills, the professional skills and the personal attributes of a typical computer systems engineer? Again, this paragraph about computer systems and engineers should have enough detail in there for me as 
um, a non-engineer person to read that paragraph and have a a generally good understanding of what that role entails. Same thing for cloud architect, same thing for embedded systems engineer. Now, obviously these are mine, you're supposed to choose yours. And again, I'm gonna keep repeating this, this, your job roles or career choices would come from either your skills test, your personality test, or just from what you know. I have students who've told me, my dad is this kind of engineer, my uncle is this kind of engineer. I wanna be this kind of engineer instead because maybe you have knowledge prior to doing the test, that's perfectly fine. So, um, provide information about the specific career you have chosen to get work experience in. Expand on this as much as you can. So, it says up here, right, we need to um, discuss ways in which work experience can inform, can give us information on our own career choices and help us prepare for employment in engineering. So, I've given some bullet points down here on, on, on what that that paragraph or what those series of paragraphs might look like or the questions you might be able to ask yourself and answer. It says, is this job right for you? That's one of the main things. So as a computer, so I'm just going to put computer systems engineer, CSE, right? Is this job right for you? Learning um, about the actual responsibilities of this role. What do I actually need to be able to do this role? Can I actually learn the skills needed? Now, this is very off topic and random, but let's just say if I were ever asked to be um, a skydiver or if someone ever asked me to skydive, I would simply say, hell no. That's not a skill I care to have. It's not a skill I want to have. It's not a skill I, I, I won't enjoy it. I know that for a fact. I'm going to be screaming and behaving like a crazy person. So that's not for me. If computer systems engineer gives you the same level of anxiety maybe not the same but you know what i mean if it's not something you enjoy doing if it's something you know you won't like if it has a series of skills or a set of skills in that role that you think that's definitely not right for me then that's the whole point of work experience you're going to ask yourself like is this job fun do i enjoy doing the things i am doing i do not like these things i am doing i can simply change i actually did this on my work experience when i was about 16 17 i had work experience i didn't like it and i asked to be changed and i actually got into um working as a let's say it technician for my school instead these are all the ways that um, work experience can actually help you decide whether that career is for you. You're going to look at things as day-to-day um, -day working. So the things you do on a day-to-day -day basis, are you enjoying them? Are they fun? Are you learning them well? Are they stressing you out? Are you getting hurt? The day-to-day -day workings, if it's not something you can do, not something you enjoy, not something you want to do, that's the whole point. This work experience or work experience in general in that specific role is going to help you decide whether that field, that branch of engineering is for you or not. And if it's not for you, that's perfectly fine. So um, it is early days and you are actually in a non-contractual role. You can normally opt out once done in a respectful way without any consequences. So let's just say you are on work experience. You think actually this isn't for me. You can go to your boss at some point and, and say to the boss or the supervisor, the manager, be like, I thought I would like this. I'm not really enjoying this. Would you mind if I signed off? I've, I'll finish my days. So let's just say it's a Wednesday, Thursday. I'll finish my week. I'll, I'll do everything you need me to do. But next week, I would prefer not to come in. I want to look for something else that's suited best for me. That's perfectly fine. And in 99% of cases, employers won't mind because... If it's not for you, you being there and being unhappy and sad and not working well, not working to your full potential, greeting customers in a non-friendly way, having a droopy face, it's not going to be beneficial for them either, right? You can go do another work experience which you think would be more suited to you. So again, these are some of the reasons that I think work experience is going to help you decide on your chosen career. Work experience is going to help you decide if this thing is for you. Hopefully that was useful. Hopefully that was detailed enough. And thank you for watching.